This is Grammy weekend, of course, and aside from the big show on Sunday night, the hottest and most exclusive party is actually in just a few hours. Music industry titan Clive Davis is host. He's launched countless careers for legends like Whitney Houston and Alicia Keys. This evening, Davis will throw his free Grammy party for the 42nd consecutive year. And for the first time in 15 years, it's happening here in New York. On stage and in the audience, almost everyone at the annual Clive Davis party is an A-lister. For 42 years now, the night before the Grammys, Davis has hosted what's become the record industry's unofficial annual ball. And when it ends, yeah. and then everyone's at best of them, how will you top yourself? Do you feel pressure to top yourself every year? I feel the responsibility, you could use the word pressure, to put on the best show I can. The party started after Davis launched a new label, Arista, and their first record, Barry Manilow's Mandy, won two Grammy nominations in 1976. And so we took over the Bel Air Hotel, and Stevie Wonder came, and Elton John came, and John Denver came. I knew I was on to a really good special thing. We went along with Clive for CBS Sunday Morning in 2011. That night, the crowd would include Katy Perry, Warren Beatty, and Usher. Why is it such a hot ticket? Why is it a hot ticket? Because there's no audience like it. You must have a lot of people begging you for invitations. I do have that, and that's the most painful part. And you have a limitation, so there is a certain amount of pain when you can't say you have a lifetime pass. And it's taken usually personally, and it, it, it's painful. During rehearsals this week at the Sheraton Times Square, Clive went over the seating chart with his son, Doug. On the other side of Jay-Z is going to be Seinfeld, Rob Reiner. And the list of performers is usually kept top secret till the night itself. But Clive let us catch a glimpse when Logic was rehearsing. It's almost like the Grammys here. It's like really weird, you know, but it's, I, I think it's really fantastic. The young rapper is well aware he'll be performing for an unusual audience. It's kind of freaking me out. There's so many people that like you know and that you know are going to be here and they're like this crazy status and I'm like the most basic dude in the world so I'm just going to show up with my wife and like be awkward so but it's cool. The party's known for many memorable performances and one memorable tragedy. Whitney Houston was supposed to be staying here for her mentor Clive Davis's famous pre-Grammy party. In 2012, Whitney Houston died in her hotel room at the Beverly Hilton just hours before the event. How tough a night was that for you? That was probably the toughest night of all. I do have a very heavy heart. Whitney was there not to perform. Whitney was her favorite night of the year. She would fly there all the time. So in the same way you don't call off the Grammys, you pay tribute, and we pay tribute. Do you actually get to enjoy this night? I do enjoy it more in retrospect than during it, but we've had artists get sick, you know, the morning of the show. And one year, Clive remembers, after a last-minute cancellation, he waded into the cocktail party, desperately looking for a replacement. Spotting Smokey Robinson and saying, I've got a 10-minute break in my show. Smokey, you know we have the best musicians. Can I get you on stage? And of course, you said you got me. So I'm never relaxed until it's over. <laughs> Do you have a good time when you go, Mr. Oh, it's the best. It's the best party. It's because you can walk into the cocktail party and there's Smokey Robinson. Oh, there's Smokey over the yeah, vodka he's just martini. Another guest. <laughs> the Grammys are tomorrow night, right here on CBS.